Welcome back to part two of the Spring Road Trip. No sooner than I pulled onto the highway to head towards Oatman, I saw the first sign of the burrows the next eight miles. How fun. The town of Oatman was actually only 2.2 miles from the campground that I stayed in. And uh, I hadn't seen a burrow or a donkey yet. Oatman is a village in the Black Mountains of Mojave County, Arizona with an elevation of 2,700 feet. It began as a small mining camp when two prospectors struck a 10 million gold find in 1915. Though the vicinity had already been settled for a number of years, Oatman population grew to more than 3,500 in the course of a year. The name Oatman was chosen in honor of Olive Oatman, a young Illinois girl who was captured and enslaved by Indians during her Pioneers family massacre during their journey westward in 1851. She was later sold or traded to the Mojave who adopted her, tattooed her face in the custom of the tribe. She was released in 1856 at Fort Yuma. The town looked quirky enough to make me want to take a little walk about, so I parked Miko and started walking the streets, taking pictures as I went along. I guess you're not supposed to bring small dogs to this area, but I finally saw my first donkey or mule up on a hill above the city. It was pretty cool. It's my understanding that the mules and donkeys that roamed the area were left over from the old mines once the miners abandoned them. Everything is themed for those mules, which is quite funny. In 1921, a fire burned down many of the Oatman's smaller buildings but spared the Oatman Hotel built in 1902. It remains the oldest two-story adobe structure in Mojave County Legend has it that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard supposedly spent their honeymoon after their 1939 wedding in Kingman, Arizona. There are signs posted all over the town of Oatman not to feed the burrows carrots. I found out that they want them to continue eating the grass along the highways as their built-in lawnmowers. Oatman was definitely a fun stop for a very touristy little old mining town. There were many t-shirts for sale and I did pick up one as a souvenir. I did see this donkey in someone's front yard and this sign perplexed me until I left Oatman and realized it was meant for the road from Oatman to Kingman, Arizona. This road was narrow with hairpin turns with signs saying 10 miles an hour around the curves. It was crazy. It was then that I saw my first burrows on the road. I think they were looking for carrots, not the burrow balls of hay that they sold in town to feed them. They were brazen. They just came right up to you. They almost like blocked the road to stop you and ask for food. It was nuts. Let it be known, when you're traveling these types of roads, the only time you're gonna have oncoming traffic is on a curve, every time. Or a burrow on the road. I now completely understand the sign I saw in town that said you survived 191 curves in the last eight miles. Wow, that was a treacherous narrow road along Route 66. Getting down in the valley, they had some old gas stations from Route 66 era, and now are there gift shops 
And now that I was in the flat plains heading towards Kingman, all was much calmer and not a burrow in sight. Well, I made it to Kingman, Arizona, to Bob and Angie's place. They let me set up camp in their backyard overlooking their 10 acres of the most beautiful and spectacular desert. It was gorgeous. After catching up, having the most amazing meals, and some minor computer repairs, I woke up to birds chirping in what I think is called a buckhorn right next to Miko. You can see the straw in its little beak and here is the nest it's building. The desert's a magical place. There are flowers and things everywhere. You just have to stop take the time and look for them. Here's Auntie's new art studio and Bob's new tractor. After amazing breakfast of homemade biscuits and gravy and eggs, Angie and I took off in her car and she gave me a whirlwind tour of the surrounding area of Kingman. We started with the keepers of the Wild Nature Park. Wow, this place was amazing. Hey buddy, hi buddy. Keepers of the Wild Nature Park is located in a very picturesque 175 acre canyon in Valentine, Arizona, just 20 minutes east of Kingman. And it's located on historic Route 66. What's happening emus? The nature park is an accredited Top rated 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting abused, neglected, abandoned, and retired captive wildlife, providing the best standard of care and helping enforce humane treatment of all animals through education and public awareness. They are accredited by the American Sanctuary Association, are members of the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Here's another one. Yeah. Hi guys. We were told by one of the groundkeepers that they have six tigers from the GW Zoo in Oklahoma from the Tiger King. Here is a quote from their website. As keepers, we seek to alleviate all animals suffering and strive to help eliminate the use of wild animals as pets and their exploitation in show business. The preservation and protection of wildlife and the environment are paramount in our goals. Evidence of that is real clear on this white wolf. Jonathan Kraft, a former Las Vegas illusionist, used exotic animals such as tigers and lions in his shows on the famed Vegas Strip. Hi. What? Jonathan loved his animals and gave them the utmost care. But as time went on, he felt something wasn't right. In 1995, Jonathan put his Vegas production on hiatus and gave up show business in order to rescue and provide a forever home to captive wildlife while fulfilling his mission to educate the public about the ecological and animal welfare issues we face today. 25 plus years and hundreds of rescues later, Jonathan Kraft has become a trusted animal behaviorist and activist. Kraft and Keepers of the Wild have been featured in numerous television shows and articles worldwide such as Smithsonian and PBS. What I found that was pretty cool is all of the enclosures are wrapped up along the hillside so the animals have plenty of room to roam around and all the trails that take you through these enclosures are all dirt paths. Pretty awesome, really awesome. We had a really nice time at the Keepers of the Wild Nature Park. Now it's time to move on. We stop at Hackberry, Arizona. A must in Hackberry is getting your photo taken with Willie White Nose. 
and I think he had a good time because I see a smile on his face. The Hackberry General Store and Gas Station on State Highway 66 is a throwback in time. Can you imagine who would win here getting gas, the car or the tree? Hackberry is located 23 miles northeast of Kingman. Hackberry has a post office which serves 68 residential mailboxes. A former mining town, Hackberry takes its name from the Hackberry Mine, which was named for a Hackberry tree in the nearby spring. Going in the Hackberry General Store, it is loaded with memorabilia everywhere on every surface, ceilings, floors, walls, uh, you name it. They even have a room dedicated to Elvis. This looks like it might have been an old deli at one time. If you're traveling through the Kingman area of Arizona and you're missing a hubcap, well come on down to the Hackberry General Store because I think they might have one to fit your car. And if you're not feeling well, you can visit the pharmacy there from the 1930s. What really is the gem of the Hackberry General Store and service station is out yonder in the back. They have the repair shop full of more goodies. Need a tune-up? They got all the equipment. I've never seen so many flathead V8s intact in one location in my life. Need a new engine? Come on down to the Hackberry General Store service station and repair shop because we got one for you. Tomater. Further out yonder they have the music hall and a 1920s charcoal kiln. So cool. It looks like at one time there used to be some cabins or maybe a motel, little bungalows. They were really cool. I'm a real fan of old rusty things and I really enjoy looking at it. Can't believe some things could still be around after all these years. And this sign here needed some help. The six was a little kiltered, so I took care of that. That's better. I was on and off Route 66 a few times through this trip, and I have to say, Hackberry, good job. Some really good old stuff there. Our next stop was home of the Giganticus Hedicus. Yeah, you heard me right. Um, here he is. Here's your Gigantic Hedicus. It looks to me like a replica from an Easter Island Moai. I don't know. Just me. Have you ever seen a giant barrel of baby rattlers? Well, now you have. It was awesome to see Herbie and the old gas pumps. And you could buy some quality oil there. There was a lot of art installations and some funky cars and motorcycles about. I think this might be a 1956 Nash Metropolitan. Tomater. A Corvette police car, they must mean business here. And in case of a nuclear attack, here's some instructions. We worked up quite an appetite and decided to stop and have a very late lunch. And I have to say, it was deliciosa. I hope I pronounced that right. It was yummy. After lunch, we headed over to the Kingman Visitor Center, which is actually located in the Desert Power and Water Company of 1907. And look at this photo op. I'm coming back tomorrow to get a shot of Miko. We made it inside just a few minutes before closing, but enough time to come and see all of the electric cars throughout the years. Pretty incredible. 
Across the street from the Kingman Visitor Center is Locomotive Park. This is the Santa Fe Railway's 3759, a standard gauge 484 heavy mountain type steam railway locomotive. The Santa Fe Kingman, Arizona locomotive. That thing is massive. Built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1928. Its regular service was pulling passenger trains on the Santa Fe's main line through Kingman, which was a water stop. It was retired in 1953. What a fun packed day we had. And it was a long one, I'll tell ya. Not too long after we got back to the house, this happened. Hailing in the Arizona desert. Out of nowhere, it just started hailing. And it was wild. Uh, Bob said it was a squall coming through. Immediately after the hail stopped, the wind started blowing and we got into a huge sandstorm. It was so amazing. And just like that, it was calm as ever. The next morning, after another amazing breakfast and a little socializing, I headed out to downtown Old Kingman, because you know I had to take Nico for his photo op. But first, I stopped off at the Old Kingman Railway Station. Kingman Station Depot was built in 1907 as an Amtrak train station located in the historic Kingman district. Amtrak Southwest Chief trains stop at Kingman Station once daily in each direction. The station has an enclosed waiting room but is unmanned. Of the eight Amtrak stations in Arizona, Kingman ranks third with boarding and detraining an average of 28 passengers daily. I then headed over to the Kingman Visitor Center so Miko could have his flex. After that, we skedaddled on over to Lake Mojave to see how the levels were doing there. This is just before Catherine's Landing on the Arizona side. And if you look real close, you can see the dam is at full capacity. Crazy. This is Davis Dam, and on the other side is Laughlin and Bullhead City. The Colorado River is looking pretty full too. Just a few miles over the dam is our next stop, Christmas Tree Pass. So I drove in the canyon, I got in about 13 miles, and I started realizing I think I went farther than I was supposed to, to find the destination that I was actually looking for. So I turned around and headed back. And then I finally saw it, a Christmas tree. Apparently the locals decorate all the pine trees up in the canyon during the holidays. I guess that one was left over, but it was cool. And on the way back to the main highway, I saw all these cool rock formations. And mind you, we still haven't reached the destination I was headed for. This is a sign I was looking for, and apparently it's only two miles from the main highway. Grapevine Canyon. This is where there's some really cool petroglyphs, or so I've been told. So let's go take a look. I was told to walk up the riverbed. There are trails on each side of the river banks, but walking up the riverbed, you get a chance to see animals and it's a little softer uh, ground to walk on. The Grapevine Canyon petroglyphs are located near Spirit Mountain, just outside of Laughlin, Nevada. The area is also known as Christmas Tree Pass. While the petroglyphs extend through the canyon, a significant concentration lies at the entrance to the canyon, which is at an elevation of 2,395 feet. The area features over 700 petroglyphs and many rock shelters. 
the camera doesn't show the magnitude of the height where these petroglyphs are. The only way to get a true understanding is to actually go there. When you look at some of these zoomed in on the camera lens, you wonder how in the heck did they get all the way up there to make these? They must have been hanging upside down by ropes. It's, your brain can't understand it. It's absolutely spectacular. The petroglyphs were created between 1100 and 1900 AD. Both the meaning of the glyphs and their creators remain unclear, although the area was inhabited by the Moabi. The site was listed on the National Registry of Historic Places on December 15, 1984. Mapping of the estimated 250 panels of glyphs was conducted in 2009. In March of 2010, David Smith, accompanied by two other individuals, defaced 30 acres of petroglyphs by shooting them with an automatic paintball gun. His sentence was to serve time in federal prison and pay almost $10,000 in restitution. I have to say, I saw no spray paint, no trash, no litter. I can't tell if any of these petroglyphs were altered or added, but it was very clean. It was a very easy hike into the canyon. So if you're ever in Laughlin or Bullhead City, take the 15, 20 minute drive out of town and come visit these. I mean, you'll be blown away. So from here, we headed to Joshua Tree. Um, the reason is I'm cutting through the national park on the west side to make it to some BLM land at the exit of Joshua Tree down at the 10 between Desert Center and Cactus City, I believe. The last time I was in Joshua Tree, I entered on the west in Yucca Valley and exited to the north in 29 Palms. This trip, we're entering on 29 Palms, but we're going totally south on the eastern side. It's a completely different environment. Um, the little loop from Yucca Valley to uh, 29 Palms brings you up and down the hills and a lot of red rock formations. Here it was pretty flat going through a valley. Nevertheless, it was a beautiful drive. Just a stark contrast from the, the other route, for sure. If you ever visit Joshua Tree National Park, I would definitely on your first visit do the loop from Yucca Valley to 29 Palms. And if you have time, backtrack a little from 29 Palms and go all the way out to the 10. It is a beautiful, beautiful drive. I made it to the south entrance of Joshua Tree about two miles from the 10, just as it was getting dusk. I found me a nice campsite away from people with a already existing fire pit and set up camp. What a great way to spend the last night. Up on the hill overlooking Desert Center see the building just barely in the distance and as it got darker and darker the city lights popped on and made for a great sunset.
I know, I know. Another hot dog? Well, yeah. There's nothing like a hot dog on a campfire. Check out all the shooting stars. Here, I'll play it again so you can see it. All right, hope you enjoyed. Love you, Mom.